Hi everyone, so excited you're here joining us today, this live Q&A video with a special, special guest from Trinidad and Tobago. His name is Joel and he is the host of a culinary uh, lifestyle TV show called Cup of Joe Caribbean and he is joining us, like I said today, from Trinidad and Tobago, our islands that are just north of Venezuela, which is in South America. And he'll uh, hop on here shortly. I just sent a request uh, invite for him to join. And so we'll get started shortly talking about Caribbean food and recipes. Uh, so excited you're here joining us today because this is a very exciting, uh, vibrant culture. They have Creole traditions, delicious food, and Joel's show is, is very exciting. He um, works with celebrities and other chefs and through the cooking show that you can find on YouTube, there's just a lot of information to take in. Um, such uh, excitement and joy and, and a passion for food. So I'm so glad um, he'll be joining us today shortly. I just sent in a request. And so we will get started here talking about Caribbean food and recipes. Thank you for everyone joining today. This is going to be a very exciting conversation about Caribbean food and recipes. Uh, all the way from Trinidad and Tobago is Joel. He is the host of a culinary lifestyle TV show called Cup of Joe Caribbean. So I encourage you to check it out um, also on YouTube. And they do some live cooking uh, featuring some celebrities, other chefs, it's really, really exciting. Uh, the islands of Trinidad and Tobago are just north of Venezuela in South America. And so here he is, Joel. How are you today? Hello. <laughs> technology, technology oh, bugs, so, Jessica. Yeah, the, uh, technology is our best friend and our worst enemy at the same time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so excited to have you. So glad, so glad to be on. Yeah, so glad, so glad to be on. Thank you very much for inviting me. So I was just introducing and telling everyone about your, your cooking show on YouTube, or here on Instagram. Um, such yeah. an exciting uh, topic. You know, you, you bring such a richness and a passion. And, and so first I want to ask you, Joel, you know, tell us a little bit about your country, uh, the islands of Trinidad and Tobago, for those watching and joining in now. Yeah, so Trinidad and Tobago is a beautiful little double island, Trinidad and Tobago, we are, we are sister isle, uh, kind of located to the southern part of the Caribbean. Um, and, and really, when you think Trinidad, when people hear Trinidad, when people hear Tobago, um, it's, it's, it's fun, cool vibes, partying, carnival, that's what you hear. But we also have such a rich, diverse ethnicity, ethnicity the backgrounds from all over the world um, and that kind of lends to why our food is also so diverse so yeah we just we just a wonderful place that you know that that, that exudes so much wonderful vibrancy and, and a real true caribbean right. island and you know i'm sure all the things that you just mentioned there uh the traditions the, the history that plays a role in the food and the culinary uh routines and traditions that you have as well so um, if you could tell us a little bit about, you know, what um, what influences are in the culinary traditions of the of the islands? Yeah, I, I think we're one of the most unique islands uh, and places on the earth, to be quite honest, um, that would have mm -hmm. Indian, Chinese, African, Syrian, Lebanese. Um, we also have a Latin American influence because we're so close to Venezuela. Um, so you're talking, look at how many cuisines I'm talking about. They're kind of just kind of just joins into one and creates, yeah, unique flavors, different types of flavors, influences from all over the world. And we have a real melting pot of those flavors happening right here in Trans Tobago. So that's really why I think our food is so diverse and so unique um, because, yeah, it's all those different cuisines coming together in one melting pot here in Very TNT. Great. And you specifically, Joel, let's, let's, um, a little background information. How did you get into cooking and, and having your own cooking show? Yeah, so that's, a, that's a real interesting <laughs> story because growing, growing up, I never really was involved in the kitchen. Um, I, I was very much a, a sport fanatic. 
um, and I, eventually I got into sports journalism and I was a sports anchor on one of the local television stations here for many, many years. Um, but all before that, I met my wife and uh, that was a happy food story that went all along to today <laughs> because she basically, when I met her, she had thousands, hundreds and thousands of cookbooks so that she she came with. And we had a little apartment. I always remember the little apartment when we first moved into our first little apartment. There was hundreds of cookbooks. So I said, where are all these cookbooks going? Uh, you know, and I just started reading cookbooks uh, because she had so many cookbooks. And seriously, at that point, as a, as a young married man, got interested in, 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 in not only just Caribbean food, but food from all over the world. And, 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 and recognizing that, you know, we can, we can make so many different unique dishes by blending flavors. Uh, and that's what kind of led me into cooking at home. So I would cook at home every other Sunday. I would say, I'm cooking this Sunday. And it really just developed into us doing a website called trinicooks.com. Um, and that was the first website, trinicookstt.com. Uh, that was the first website we did, um, where it's all recipes, local recipes. And then Copper Joe was born because I was a television personality and I was into television. The idea of doing a, a TV show was born. And I started cooking on the show one day and one thing led to the next. And yeah, I'm now, I'm now doing a, a cooking culinary program um, across the Caribbean, across the, across the world now. Um, interestingly, today we're actually launching our streaming platform, Jessica. I don't know if you timed it, but we're actually launching CopperJoeCaribbean.com where we'll be streaming all the programs. So you, wherever you are in the world, you can get our content now That's live fantastic. and alive. Fantastic. So exciting. When did that, um, yeah. when did you get that all set up? Yeah, so we've been working on that. Um, COVID-19 COVID, COVID, COVID -19 had obviously put some, some, some little spokes in the wheel, but we've been working on it very hard. And we are actually launching the website later this evening. The website will go live at six o'clock this evening, um, where we will be launching not only Cup of Joe, but some other culinary programs coming out of the Cup of Joe studios and really representing Caribbean culinary fusion. Congratulations. Lots of fun, lots of food, lots of friends. Yeah, yeah, that's happening. That's happening later today. So, yeah, so you're talking to me on a good day. <laughs> it's a good day. <laughs> <laughs> and so Joe, let's let's dive into what is you know the, the Caribbean culinary uh, lifestyle. Um, starting with you know key ingredients, flavors. What are what makes it unique? And and you know you said it's that melting pot, but what differentiates it from the sources of those other culinary traditions? I, I think I think one of the main things in the Caribbean is how we treat with our seasonings and our flavors. Um, so so a, a lot of times when when you see you have to season meats and so on, in the, in the Caribbean, we take that very seriously. So the, the flavors come from all the fresh herbs and fresh ingredients, much like fresh herbs and ingredients all over the world. Um, but, but we tend to take those fresh herbs and ingredients and fresh seasonings very, very seriously. Uh, when we season chicken, it must stay overnight or remain two two three nights seasoning and and, and so on and, and keeping that flavor penetrating the meat um and we yeah, we, we we i think in the caribbean big bowl flavors and because as i said there's a diverse ethnic background uh, that exists here and, and live here happily together um indian african all sorts of different flavors kind of combined so our curries um very very different from any curry you would see in the world it's a, it's a rich bold curry flavor you will get here um uh, then then we have our local dishes like our pilaus um and it's a rice and peas mixed rice and peas and you can add meat lovely big with coconut milk so lots of big food big bold flavors i like to, to, to describe our our cuisine as big bold flavors that's kind of what you get here right. in tnc and so so delicious for you know anyone who hasn't yet experienced true culinary or the true caribbean uh dishes and if you had to pick a few just you know that are are just so near and dear to you and your country what would they be joel yes yeah, so, so so many people sometimes ask well, what's the national dish in trinidad tobago and, and and it's difficult to pinpoint a national dish so we, we almost because of us that ethnic multicultural background we have not national dishes <laughs> <laughs> because we as I said, we have we have 
it's it's so it's so unique. Um, I mean, when you talk about on the the Indian side of things, the East Indian side of things, uh, our our curry is 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 you know we like to say second to none. Um, and and roti, and is 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 one of our national dishes. I like to say. Um, and 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 it's 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 you know lovely in terms of the the, the meats you can get from chicken to duck. And it's lovely curry wrapped in either dalpuri, you know, and, and, and so on. And, and you can get different different types of dishes. Um, the African side, as I said, creates the pilau that I was just speaking to you about. Then there's a kalalu, where it's a, you, you, you get that lovely kalalu bush that is very unique to Trinidad and Tobago. Um, you know, one of these days, I hope that you can taste some of these wonderful dishes. And, and, and the Latin American influence has also been a major part of our foods as well, you know. So it's, it's, it's so diverse. Um, as I said, to, to, to pinpoint one national dish is almost impossible to do it. Yeah. To what was, you know, when you moved with your wife and, and all these cookbooks, what was the first uh, Caribbean recipe that you made all on your own? On my own. Or one that you're most um, proud of. <laughs> I remember. It was, so so I, I remember making my first pilau. And, and and one of the things with a pilau is, is to get the, the, the consistency of the rice perfect. Um, and, and getting that consistency perfect is either some people like it a little dry, some people like it a little wet, um, where the rice is a little overcooked and sticky. And then, you know, it's, it's somewhere in the middle. I like it somewhere in the middle. So the first one I made, I added too much liquid and it came out, it came out a little too wet, you know. But I perfected it over the while, so I'm, I'm very proud of a pilau. Um, but one of the things like I do on my show now, because of our, our diverse culture um, and, and, and our, the influences that we have around the world, I, I, I kind of do a lot of fusion. So I take what we do here in the Caribbean, and uh, I, I would, I would kind of mix it with an Italian influence, you know, that kind of thing, an uh, influence from 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 Asia, uh, and, and add those flavors because those flavors we we are, we we're very much accustomed to here in Trinidad and Tobago, but. There, 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 there are so much different flavors that you can add, combine, and create wonderful flavors with, um, and create wonderful meals. And that's a kind of what I do on my show. I kind of call it Caribbean culinary fusion because it's it's not just what we do in Trinidad or what happens in Jamaica, but it, it's it's a, it's a real fusion. Very neat. And have you traveled to these places to to experience firsthand? You know what you're what you're fusing in with the the Trinidad and Tobago dishes. Have you, traveled, again, sorry? have you traveled to some of the places like Italy um, or, you know, these other countries to experience what they're is? Yeah. yeah. So I, I had the privilege of, instead of doing a tour of Europe and, 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 and kind of touched a, a quite quite a few of the places. And as I said, some 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 of the things, as I said, the pastas in Italy, I love <laughs> pasta. And then we would do something that, that, that we, we do using 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 macaroni called a macaroni pie and it's it's it's, a, it's very unique it's a sunday lunch specialty here in Trent and tobago lots of cheese and milk and eggs and so on mixed in and baked cheesy creamy goodness um but it, you, you can add so much flavor to, to what we do as a as, as a macaroni pie and you can create an italian macaroni pie or or, or add something different size that, that that will lend to a different flavor of our traditional macaroni pie you can add seafood to a macaroni pie, you know, that kind of thing. There's so many things you can do. Um, and that's what I kind of like to do. I like to just not just do what is traditional, but, you know, in, in my first cookbook, I did a salt fish macaroni pie where it's using salt fish, salt cod, and we mix it in. And yeah, I kind of like to experiment a little, Jessica, uh, where, where, where food is concerned. <laughs> Sometimes I hit the mark, sometimes I miss. And, and the kids are just that. It's, 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 a, it's like a chemistry lab, right? You, you get to track things. And yeah. Awesome. What about, um, you know, you yeah. mentioned about the swordfish. So as people know, Trinidad and Tobago are... Swordfish. Yeah, so as, as islands, I'm sure, you know, seafood. Talk a little bit about the role of seafood in, in your cooking and, and in the, the country. Yeah. So, 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 so there are times, as I said, where even though we're we're an island, seafood always isn't the major part of what we do. Um, but there are islands, for instance, in Tobago, um, Tobago and Barbados, going up that way. Um, the flying fish is is, is is a popular fish 
in the water is there. So you go, you go to Tobago, flying fish is, 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 is major. And as I said, going up to Barbados, it's also, it's also a major dish up there. And, and yeah, it does impact on our food. I mean, we, we have fishermen that will go out, get king, kingfish, local kingfish, local curry. Um, and I mean, every weekend you can go and get fresh seafood from straight out of the sea. Fishermen can be there on our various coastlines and you can get fresh fish anytime, every weekend. Kingfish carry it and yeah, take it home and you season it up and you can do a stew fish. One of these stew fishes is, is, is very, very popular. Um, we have this spiny lobster actually as well in Tobago. Um, and, and, and if it is that, that, that's also something that comes out of Tobago as well, which is our sister island. So yeah, seafood has played a, a big role in, 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 our, in our dishes. Um, in, in, in Tobago, actually, one of their national dishes in Tobago is curry crab and dumpling. Um, and because and, and, and a lot of crab, the blue crab in Tobago is a, is a popular, popular thing. Um, and if you eat curry crab or dumpling, you'll be licking your fingers from now till. It's, it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> no leftovers, right? It all goes the first step. No leftovers, no leftovers. <laughs> and I want to go back to something you mentioned um, a little bit earlier about the, the kalu bushes is, is only found uh, in Trinidad and Tobago. So what is, what is that? Um, yeah. What's, what is that? I, so, so, so what is it? I, 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 I don't want to go on record as to what exactly it is because what happened is I traveled the Caribbean. I always remember when I went to Jamaica Jamaica offered Kalalu, and I got excited. But the Kalalu in Trinidad really comes from the dashin. So it's it's it's, it's the dashin, the veg, the, the vegetable, the, the vegetable root, root vegetable that is dashin. It's the leaf that comes from that root vegetable that we use and we create Kalalu. Um, it's the kal we call it the dashin bush Kalalu kal Kalalu bush, and we create Kalalu. But everywhere else in the Caribbean. The, they refer to it a little differently. So, so what, what we do in Trinidad is very unique to us um, and very unique to our, 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 our culinary tradition as what Kalalu is. It's very different in Jamaica, very different in Guyana, and, and different parts of the Caribbean. So, yeah, Kalalu bushes out of from, from, from the dashin, the root vegetable that is dashin. And, and would you compare it to other root vegetables? Like, you know, if we're thinking of radishes or turnips, carrots? So, so, so probably like probably like turnip, um, and I don't know if the leaves are as edible as the the, the, oh. the dashin leaves because the dashin leaves, as I said, it, it, it's it's edible. We we literally mince it up, cut it up, saute it down, um, and, and it's probably like, like the collard greens, probably in the US. Yes. You know the collard greens, probably if, if I'm to make a comparison, probably along those lines. Um, but as I said, very very unique to Trinidad and Tobago. The dashin leaf is, is something that I think is. It's Caribbean and, 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 and Trini's claim it. <laughs> I'll have to try it sometime. I don't know if I can find it around here. Yes. I, I, I wish I could cook it for you sometime. That's one of my favorite dishes. <laughs> yeah, it's one of my favorite dishes. I hope I can cook that it for you sometime. Great. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> so what about um, desserts? You know, what, what are the foods and dishes that you see when it comes time for a dessert? So, local desserts, and it's, it's, it's Christmas time, so I'll start there. Um, local desserts, Chris, around Christmas time, um, there's something that we call, no, I think you may know it as mm. fruit cake. But it's, so we call, we call it like black cake, um, where it's, you, you soak the fruits, you soak raisins and currants and in alcohol, you soak it in, you, you soak it in some rum for, 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 for weeks. Um, and then and then you literally make a cake with those fruits. So when you cut into that, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's a lovely, intense, alcohol-laden fruit wow. cake. <laughs> um, and that, that's, something, that's something that we really just do specifically around Christmas time here in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, so fruit cake is something that I, I, I love. But, I mean, in terms of other desserts, uh, we, we also do a, a sweet bread, um, also laden with, Fruits, raisins, cherries, currants. Uh, that sweet bread is, is, is all co coconut, coconut filled as well. Um, that's another local favorite. Um, and a lot of other local fruits. But we love to do the cheesecakes and all the fancy things as well. Um, and sometimes we put the, the trifles and so on. And we put local fruits 
in it, we may not necessarily always use the strawberries and the kiwis, but we, we put our local fruit, so we might do a mango cheesecake because we have mangoes here throughout the year. So, we, you know, diff different flavors. Um, yeah, and, 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 and we do different desserts, different desserts at all times. I want to follow up about coconut, um, you know, because we know coconut milk plays a big role in, in certain dishes aside from the dessert. So uh, when you're, you're talking about rice and then what liquid you're cooking with, uh, is, it, is it common to use coconut milk when you're making rice for dishes? Very much so. I, I, I swear by it. So so most so I, I, I do a coconut vegetable mm -hmm. rice that's amazing. Um and, and the coconut vegetable rice is, is exactly that. Um you're not just necessarily gonna use water or chicken stock, but the coconut milk and we get we get actual real coconut milk sometimes here, uh from the coconut. Um and yeah, when you when you when you grate that coconut, not many people do it still, but you grate that coconut and you squeeze that coconut milk straight out of the coconut. Um, it flavors rice dishes. It flavors, as I said, it flavors all desserts. It flavors all callaloo. It flavors so many things. I just think coconut is such an important mm -hmm. ingredient in the Caribbean. I don't know if it's because it's very accessible. Um, but yeah, in terms of flavoring, coconuts are, are, are a major part of the culinary cuisine and, here. And around you, you know, if you were to walk outside right now, would you see coconut trees and... No, so I'm not that lucky. I, I, I'm a city boy. <laughs> I, I'm from the city, but you go up into certain parts of, 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 of in, around the island. Um, you go to Toku, and you go into Miaro, and you, you drive anywhere along the, the coastline you drive in the country. Yeah, coconut trees are, 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 are all over. Um, and you can get a coconut tree anywhere. There are people that have coconut trees in their yards, huh? um, but in terms of laden coconut trees, you go to the coastlines anywhere, anywhere on the island, and yeah, you can get a coconut tree everywhere you look. <laughs> That's great. What other, um, you know, crops will you find when you're driving around? Uh, crops, as in, yeah, as in yeah. food crops. As in, as in, as in fruit crops, you can get. I mean, all sorts of food crops you can get. Um, mango trees are very, very popular. Um, every every yard has a mango tree. Um, I remember my grandfather back in the day. He would have every single fruit tree, so he had a sour sub tree. And when you're talking mangoes, he had a a, a variation of mango trees. He, he, you had um, Julie mango, Vea mango, uh, starch mangoes, all different types of mango trees in, in his yard. Uh, avocados actually are another big tree, another big tree because um, you get Zabuka, avocado, we call it Zabuka. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a popular thing once it's in season, and a lot of people have still have trees in their yards, sour sop, um, a lot of fruit trees. Fruit trees, I, I grew up on fruit trees, you know, in terms of when I was growing up, every yard, friend's yards had trees and fruit trees. You would grow up on there sucking mangoes, mm -hmm. sucking oranges. Sometimes you don't eat lunch. All they're doing is eating fruits for the entire day. <laughs> and and that makes me think, Joel, when, uh, you know, traveling to different places, for example, I've been um, in Mexico and, and Cuba and Jamaica and thinking of that area of the world and how big of a role fruit plays. But you, you have the fruit there. And then, you know, I return back to Northeast the United States and the mangoes just aren't the same. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's amazing how delicious they are. Yeah, yeah. No, and it is very similar to the, to the coconut, Jessica, because I, as I said, I have traveled and, 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 and coconut water and coconut milk is also not the same when you travel to, to, to North America and into the UK. It's, it's, it's different. I think we have, as I said, based on this part of the world, there, there, there's a richness and authenticity uh, to, to, to our coconuts and our mangoes and our fruits. Um, and, and yeah, there's things that you can only get in the Caribbean that you have to come to the Caribbean for. <laughs> and it's not a bad idea. It's a great trip for winter. Yeah. <laughs> and you know talking about the weather um when you're thinking of the climate year round is it is it pretty hot year round and i'm sure that plays a role in the, the spices and the flavors and, and what's really refreshing on a hot day yeah so so yeah i mean we, we literally have two seasons it rains 
and then it's very hot sun. <laughs> so, so that's basically yeah. So, so, so it's generally hot. Uh, or, 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 or wet. There's a wet season and a dry season. So we now, I think we now out of the wet season. The, I'm saying that, and I think it's raining outside. Uh, we get a little rain outside, but we're now out of the the, the wet season, the rainy season, and we're now going into a dry season. That dry season will go down to about June. There about July when the hurricane season actually starts around around the around the islands, um, and then they will you will now get a little more rain going into July, August, September, and uh, you get a little more rain. So that's a little wet period for us. You, you get more rains, but generally speaking, it's hot. Every day is a beach day. <laughs> Every day is a beach day. <laughs> Joe, I wanted to um, ask you, you. You brought up about growing up and and your grandfather having all these different fruit trees. Um, what what was that experience like? You know, the the dinner table, for example. Um, your your family's tradition. What it's like in the in the country of Trinidad and Tobago. You know, Caribbean culture. What is it like around food when we you know coming together at a table and eating? So 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 Sundays used to be a big day. I think it still is. But 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 as I said, growing up as a as, as a boy, you you would eat quickly together with the family if you can um, during the week when everybody's busy and going to work and school and so on. But 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 Sundays were I, I think still is a big family day. Um, so that's when I was telling you about macaroni macaroni pie, the callaloo. You would have probably a potato salad and and then a stew or a baked chicken loaded on your plate there was a, you had two or three carbs two or three salads a fresh salad and, a, and something that we call a cold slaw i don't know if you know about it, where you have the chopped up chopped up cabbage and carrots and you mix it with some mayonnaise um sometimes you might have a stew beans or like a, a lentil a lentil lentil peas or red beans and you stew that and yeah, it, it, Sunday was a spread, um, and and all those that that Sunday lunch Caribbean vibe would have come through on your Sunday table every single Sunday, and and that's when the family as I said will more or less get together and sit down and and, and have a meal together. Sunday was is a special day, and I think still is a special day in that's the Caribbean. Great. And, you know, it kind of prepares you for the week ahead and whatever that crazy busy um, is, and you know, just recenters you. That's awesome. True, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Joel, I uh, want to um, yeah. ask. You know, you talked about your your what the website um, where anything can be watched live from around the world. So, um, when I was introducing you to to everyone who's watching here, you know, I mentioned YouTube and Cup of Joe Caribbean. That's your your show. Um, so, tell us a little bit about you know yeah. how often you're you're releasing content and, and what you have coming up. Yeah, so so cup of Joe, um, and, and and that's the show that I do and I hosted over the last. I think we're going into our eighth, eighth, ninth year of doing the show. Um, and we we started the show just locally here in Trinidad and Tobago, uh, and we now, as I said, seen in nineteen islands across the Caribbean, um, because now the show is being aired in different different parts of the Caribbean, nineteen islands, and we just really thought it was now time. To expose the show because we get because of the internet and what the internet now does, social media. Um, a lot of people from different parts of the world, including you, Jessica. You know, so how can I see this show? You know, and, and that kind of thing. And, and I, I, I want to see this show. And then when I recognize, okay, there is really no time to kind of just expose what we do, our version of of, of, of Caribbean culinary fusion, um, and, and spread it around the world and just kind of share our recipe ideas. With, with the rest of the world. And the only way we, we, we thought we could have done that was on a streaming website um, and, and have our content there for the rest of the world to see. So that's what we did. Um is going to be dropping content from this evening. Not What we did is not only me, Kappa Joe, but we actually added some new shows. So other new shows, new hosts that will be coming on board and, and we'll be dropping, I would say, about two shows a week. We're going to drop on a Wednesday, new shows, we'll drop a new cup of joe, probably two to three shows. And then on a Saturday, we drop another show. So two, two to three shows every week, you can just come on and view new shows, view some of the old content that I might consider old, but in terms of, you know, you may not have seen those shows, but some of the old content that we would have done on Cup of Joe, 
now accessible to, to the rest of the world. So we're opening that up over over time, over the over time to the rest of the world so that you can see some of the recipes we have done, some of the fun, all the celebrities, you know, if you if you if you, you know some of the celebrities that, that, that are in and around the Caribbean, they have popped in on the show, cooked with me. All, all of that fun and food is on the website as we go live awesome. this evening. And I, I just thought of this yeah. as you're explaining all about, you know, what you do. If in these last eight or nine years, you talked about if there's one show, one episode or one um, host guest that you've had that stands out in your mind the most, which show or which, which guest would that be? You're putting me on the spot there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've had I've had the privilege um, to uh, there's so many interesting, wonderful people on our island and and across the islands as well because I've I've had the privilege of having uh, Caribbean celebrities as well drop by on the show as well um, and I, I always say I, I've had the privilege of seeing and meeting and greeting these people in my kitchen studio getting up close and personal with them, seeing a different side of them because, you know, sometimes, especially, with, you know, when, when we speak to our, when you look at our soak artists and our performers, you only see them yeah. on stage, you know, and, and I, I've, I've got the opportunity to get, get to know them. And through our platform, as I said, we've even got the opportunity to let people see another side of some of these, you know, personalities that they only see from afar kind of thing. So I, I really count myself privileged to be able to have that, have that opportunity over the years. Um, but 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 favorites. I I, I don't want to put favorites. I I, I, I had quite <laughs> I've had quite a few, and, and I enjoyed them all. I've enjoyed them all. I don't want to call names. <laughs> I I was watching, um, you know, scrolling through YouTube, and I was like, oh, the bloopers one. That's that you could call that one out. That's pretty fun. <laughs> That yeah, I, I I probably that bloopers is its own show by itself because I make mistakes. I make so many mistakes in the kitchen every day. Uh, I yeah, so they they have a lot of bloopers on me that they can make a separate show on that every yeah. every season. And then, you know that shows you're you're a real person. You know we're here talking live today, and everyone makes mistakes. You gotta yeah. just you know have fun with it. That's what cooking's all about too. You know learning from those mistakes and just yeah. um, building and growing and making new things. So yeah, yeah. So, so I remember, I remember, uh, and that's the thing, as I said, I, I, I never went to culinary school. I learned to cook through literally my wife, her recipe books, and, and I have perfected recipes over the years just reading cookbooks and doing my own thing. Um, so, so, so I don't know if you can see that, but I have one of my shirts, and I have a hashtag. Not a chef. Not a chef. <laughs> <laughs> so many people feel that like you cook on TV. They see me cooking on TV and think I'm a chef, but I, I, I don't claim to be a chef. I just like good food, and I have developed the ability to cook good food. And I just want to share that with as many people as That's possible. Awesome. Very humble of you, you know, given all of your accomplishments. Yeah, <laughs> that's a true story, though. That's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, Joel, this has been such a great conversation. Uh, it's been great getting to meet you and, and Thank spend, you. Um, 30 minutes with you talking all about Trinidad, Tobago, the Caribbean, uh, your show. So thank you so much for the, your time today and uh, sharing with all these people who are watching. I'm sure they've enjoyed it. Um, and, you know, we have <laughs> a uh, a friend of mine over in Great Britain saying you're self-taught and it, you know you're you're just excellent. So um, thank you so much. Um, yes. I encourage any, anyone who's watching to add comments. I'll be posting this video shortly after on my feed, so it'll be there permanently. Uh, you can tag jo Joel in Cup of Joe Caribbean, and he'll be happy to to get back to you. And I encourage you also to follow him. Um, check out the website that's launching this evening. And um, yeah, it's it's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much. Though. Thank you. I really hope one of these days, post pandemic, that I quit you. We can cook together at some That's point. Awesome. Sounds great. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> great, great, great. Thank you very much, Jessica. I appreciate you. it Bye, so much. Bye bye.